Here's another calculation that we do quite often, a general purpose lighting load for a dwelling unit. This is how we determine what's the minimum number of general lighting circuit for a dwelling unit. We're talking about the general lighting circuits that will supply power to switches and lighting and receptacles in certain parts of the dwelling unit in dens and bedrooms and things like that. We have a table in the 17 code. Now there was a change here in the 20 code that we'll look at here in just a second. It doesn't change the calculation, but it does change where we find these rules. Uh, but for the 17 code, we're gonna go to table 220.12. And when you get to table 220.12 in the 17 code, 14 code, 11 code, and so on, it gives us a number of occupancies. And each one of those occupancies has a wattage per square foot value associated with that particular occupancy. In other words, we have it a list in that table right there, 220.12, it'll list office buildings, churches, warehouses, gymnasiums, you know, all kinds of occupancies. And one of those occupancies listed there is a dwelling unit. And that table tells us that we need three watts per square foot for a lighting load at a dwelling unit, one or two family dwelling unit. Three volt amps per square feet, which is a watt. A volt amp is a watt. Now we also have requirements that tell us that the floor area that we're going to use, it, it's used without, it's the outside dimensions of the dwelling unit, but we do not count open porches, garages, unfinished spaces, things like that in our calculation. So you might have a 2,800 square foot house. And by the time you take out the square footage for the garage and the porch and patio and things like that, you end up with 2,200 square feet. That's the number that we're going to use to make this calculation for the minimum number of general purpose lighting out branch circuits at a dwelling unit. A good rule of thumb right here, to get that number we're looking for, get the square footage of your heated and conditioned area. That's basically what we're looking for, which would take out again, garages and porches and things like that. That's the number we're looking for. In other words, square footage of that green shaded area is what we're looking for based on three watts per square feet. We need to find the floor area and we're gonna multiply that times three watts, three volt amps per square feet. And then we're gonna divide that by the actual voltage involved. Those general lighting circuits would be rated at 120 volts. Floor area times three watts divided by your voltage will give you an amperage rating for your general lighting. Then you're gonna take the actual rating of the branch circuit, in other words, the overcurrent device protecting that branch circuit and divide that into this number you get right here. And that's gonna give you the minimum number of general lighting branch circuits required. Now, I have put 15 or 20 amp here. And the reason I did that is Per the National Electrical Code, the minimum size branch circuit for a dwelling unit is 14 gauge copper. And if you were using 14 gauge copper, it would be protected by a 15 amp branch circuit. Now, some places I go in my travels, sometimes I would go into a jurisdiction and they would have a local ordinance. And their local ordinance says at a minimum, we don't want 14 gauge, we want 12 gauge, even for general lighting circuits. In that case, if you were using 12 gauge for your general lighting circuits, that would be protected at what? 20 amps. So that's why I put 15 or 20 amp right there. So let's say we have a 3,400 square foot house, but by the time we take out the garages and porches and things like that, we end up with 2,800 square feet. Now we're gonna take that 2,800 square feet and multiply it times three watts, which would give us 8,400 watts or 8,400 volt amps. And then we're gonna divide that number right there by the actual voltage rating of the branch circuit involved, in this case, 120 volts, which would give us a 70 amp general purpose lighting value. Now we're gonna take that 70 amps 
and divide it by 15 if we're using 14 gauge for those general lighting circuits. And 15 will go into 74.66, which would say at a very minimum for this 2,800 square foot house, 3,400 square foot house with 2,800 square feet of living, we would need at a very minimum five 15 amp general lighting circuits. Now, if we were using 12 gauge with 20 amp rear rated, 20 will go into 73 and a half times. So at a minimum, we would need at least four 20 amp general lighting circuits. And in this case right here, guys, this isn't a situation to where you drop that decimal there, which we were allowed to do by 220.5. Anything above, if this came out to be 4.16 right here, we would need a minimum of five uh, 15 amp general lighting circuits to satisfy our general lighting loads for this particular dwelling unit. 2,800 square feet and the code tells us that we need at least five 15 amp circuits in the real world. Now that looks, uh, this whole slide right here looks great on, on paper or if you're taking a test or something. In the real world, if you had a 2,800 square foot house, 3,400 square foot house with 2,800 square feet of living space, you'd end up with probably 10 general lighting circuits. But by the time you factor in, you know, circuits for, you know, lighting loads and receptacles here and there and, you know, dishwashers and all kinds of stuff, you would probably end up with more than five, but, at a, you got to remember that the code is a minimum. So we would be talking about the branch circuits running through the bedrooms, you know, for lights and switches and so on. It's, that's your general lighting uh, circuit. And there was a change right here in the 2020 code I need you to be aware of. In the 17 code, to get that three watts per square feet, you would go to table 220.12 and dwelling units would be listed there. Um, in the 20 code, that table was renamed and reserved for non-dwelling unit loads. So you'll still find your your impact or your uh, voltage uh, wattage per square feet for lighting loads for uh, warehouses and churches and things like that at that table but that three watts per square feet was moved to 220.14J for the uh, 2020 code. Same values, and that calculation right there would, would not change from the 17 to the 20 code. You'd still come up with these same values. You would just find it at a different location than you would in the 17 code.